We'll talk about how to load an R data set into uh, the R Studio environment. So the first thing you want to do here is um, go to session and set your working directory. And here I'm going to choose my directory to uh, my desktop um, where the data set is kept. Okay. So um, now you can see set, I've set my working directory here. Um, uh, what I can also do is I can create my R script so that I'm able to save uh, all my work and review it later. So I'm going to create this file. I'm going to call this homework one. And I'm going to save it at the same uh, at the same place as my data. So uh, on desktop, you might want to create folders and organize your work a little more. So I'm going to save this and notice um, the cursor is um, on the R script here, but I can always do some exploration down here. So if you type in in your R script get WD, which is get uh, stands for get working directory, this uh, we're going to go ahead and run this and notice this is telling me that I am uh, inside my desktop. Okay. And this is telling R uh, that we're going to work uh, with files that are on the desktop. Okay. So it knows where to look. Um, what we want to do is um, either import a data set or load a data set into R. There are different ways to do that. The simplest way might be always for you to open up that data set that you have uh, downloaded. So here I can see that this is saying confirm load our data and I can say yes and notice that in my environment right here I can see that that data got loaded after this command was executed, right? So this is the name of my data set and the extension is our data. Notice that um, this data set contains um, um, a file called data, which is uh, 1731 observations of 11 variables, right? So I can click on this and I can see what those are to get a better view of what these are. And then I can collapse these categories. I can also do this um, to look at what the description contains. Now, I can click on this table right here um, and view my data. So if I do this, I can see all the variables and, and sort of get a snapshot of what my data, data looks like, okay? And uh, similarly, I can do that for the description of these variables, right? So there's another um, a subset here of this uh, data file that contains uh, the variables and their descriptions. Okay, so I can close this out and notice that um, in, the com in the console, um, the command that was executed is really uh, intuitive. It says view. So what we did here is we said to view the data, right? I'm writing a comment with the hashtag so that doesn't uh, get executed. But here, what I did was I said view data, right? So if because the name of the data set that actually contains the data and the variables is um, data, and this is case sensitive, do you want to make so you want to make sure you're doing that correctly? Um, you can say view data, and when you run this, it does the same thing as if I were to go um, click on this table right here. Okay, so we viewed the data and we've loaded the data here. Um, you can do many different things to the data. So I can say head my data and notice this is not going to work because what I want to do is put, because this is case sensitive, I want to work with this. So when I head my data, it heads all the variables. It gives me the first six observations of all the variables in my data set. Similarly, you can do tail data, right? And take a look at the last six observations. So notice it said that we have 1731 observations. So this is giving you the last six observations. Okay. If you were to alter this and you wanted to, let's say, look at the last 10 observations, you can do this instead. And now it's going to show you uh, the last 10 observations of all the variables in your data set. Okay. 
Um, you might want to look into the structure of the data as well. So here we're just exploring our data set that we loaded. So um, str here, I can say this store or this um, shows us the structure of our data set. So let's go ahead and run this. When we run this, we can see that it shows us the class of different variables in our data set. So notice decode um, is numeric and uh, all other variables are also numeric and you're able to see the first five values of um, each variable here. Okay. So The next thing we can do is try to reach in and maybe look at the minimum, maximum values or the range of a certain variable. So um, here we can reach into our data set and explore variables. So let's say we want to do this. Um, what we can write here is let's say let's start with maybe we want to get the minimum value of the math four variable for this we are going to use the the function minimum and min right this is in the base r package so we're gonna um, anytime you want to know more about a function, you can always type in uh, help. In the help menu here, you can say help min, right? And this is going to give you some information on the right hand side on how these functions are used. So it tells you how to use it um, when you look at examples right here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use it for our data set. So the data is called data with the cap in capitals. And the next thing we want to do is if we want to go into our data set and reach into our data set and pull a variable, then we want to put that dollar sign. Okay, so when we put the dollar sign, it um, gives us this menu of options so this has this is all our variables and we want to focus on math 4 this works as if you were opening a cabinet and getting something reaching for something uh, in that cabinet so the cabinet itself is your data and then you're reaching in after you put that dollar sign and grabbing that um, math 4 variable okay and then once you've got that you're basically putting a function or you're using a function to get um, the minimum value for math 4. So go ahead and run this and see that um, this is 0. Similarly, we can do this to um, get our, the maximum value of the same variable. So let's see what the maximum value is um, for math 4. That's 100. So if we describe the variables, it tells us that math 4 is the percentage of students scoring at least satisfactory on okay it's uh, cutting out here but i can uh, probably look at i can see view maybe it'll be easier because i'm on a very small window so i'm going to do this here Okay, for some reason, I need to open this up in a different, um, don't know why this is not working seamlessly, but anyway, we'll get back to this. The idea here is just to kind of get the min, max, and maybe the range of this variable, okay? So maybe we want to look at the range of math 4, and we can get that. And this should tell us that this is between 0 and 100, okay? So we've, uh, what we've done here in this video is we've learned how to load our data set um, uh, after setting our working directory. 
Uh, we've seen how we can view our data set. Um, we have looked at how we can quickly glance at the first few observations and the last few observations in our data set using the head and tail functions. Uh, we've looked at how do you look at the structure of our data set, which will give us the first five values for all the variables and also give us the class of different variables. And we looked at into how we reach into our data set to explore some things uh, about the variables that we have. Okay, so the min, max, and the range. Um, now, every time you open up R or a different file, you want to make sure that you are working in a clean environment. So there's this broom right here, which will clear objects from the work workplace. So it's a broom. It's supposed to clean up the space. So let's go ahead and clean this up. Um, and now you notice that the environment is empty. So R doesn't remember all of this stuff. If I want to clean things in my console, because I've been giving commands here, I can just hit Control L and this will clean up everything for me. Okay. And then once you have worked in this R script, you can go ahead and save this file and close it out and maybe work with another R script for another project. So that's it. Thanks.